Hey friends, today we are going to get some more plants in the ground and we are going to get some beautiful chick charms in a container. Here we are obviously in the backyard and I've got Johnny here with all of my supplies. So I thought before we delved into these two um, projects, we could just kind of get an overview of what we're going to do today. First, what we're going to do is I have got a fantastic um, tray full of all sorts of beautiful, fun chick charms that I shopped at the nursery for. Um, if you've watched our garden, um, like our nursery tours, you know that uh, last week we got in a whole beautiful shipment of these Sempervivums. These are Chick Charms, and Chick Charms is a whole beautiful line of these Sempervivums that come in the most glorious different colors and sizes and shapes. So I went through and picked out the singles, single ones that I either don't have or I really like and I wanted to add to because it was about this time last year and we did a video where I took the Michael Carr strawberry slash succulent planter and I planted it up with the chick charms. I think it really was my favorite container of all of last year because it was just so fun, so unique, so low maintenance, and it was gorgeous. So we're going to refresh that pot because I did have some succulents in there that were not cold tolerant. So we need to replace those. And then I've got a couple of holes. I just want to freshen it up and give it a new look. So we have got these beautiful um, succulents, these Sempervivums that we're going to put in there. If it says that they are chick charms, then they are cold tolerant from zones three to eight. As a 7B, it is perfect for me. Full sun, lots of beautiful color. So we're gonna talk about that and I'm gonna show you all the fun things and I'm going to show you how to take off any little chicks if you need to and then add them to other places because got a little tip for you on that one as well. Then the next project we are gonna do is we are going to get this beautiful, this is the Sunsatia Coconut um, Improved Nemesia from Proven Winners. Of course, we are have a great relationship with Proven Winners and they send us the next year's annual introductions that are going to go out onto the market. That way we can grow them as the grower and then I get to plant them in containers or gardens or wherever to really see how well they do. Right now, you can see this coconut nemesia is doing fantastic. Now, this is an improved over the other nemesia, the coconut that they had before. I'll put up all the improvements on the screen for you so you can kind of compare um, how they're doing. So we have a section right along the pathway around the yin and yang viburna that we're going to put those into the ground. So I've got 12 of these beautiful plants that we're going to put in there. Then I have my um, power planter auger. So we're gonna use the auger to uh, drill those holes, get good aeration in that. And then my black gold natural organic ultra outdoor planting mix. So we're gonna use that to amend our soil. I'll tell you all the benefits on everything that we're gonna do while we're doing what we are doing. And then, oh, I forgot to tell you. So with the chick charms, new this year, they have the chick charm giants. Now, you can see that this is in a bigger container. I actually, when we were ordering, I got them in a smaller container. You can go ahead and get them in like gallon size. It's almost like full grown. I wanted to start small and let them grow. Y'all, these things can be a foot wide. They are truly giants. So we're gonna put this one in the uh, Unique Stone bird bath that I turned into a planter with the Sempervivums. So we're gonna put that in there too. So we've got a lot of fun planting, a lot of fun time in the garden today. It is a gorgeous day, blue skies, got some clouds, we've got some rain coming in the next couple of days. So I'm gonna take advantage of this sunny day, be in the garden and get my gardening fixed before the rain comes in. So here we are on the patio with the beautiful Michael Carr strawberry slash succulent planter. This is where it stayed all summer growing season last year. Uh, I have a sweet, precious friend, Miss Kathy, and she is an amazing gardener, a master gardener in every sense of the word. And she has tons of experience. And so when I was planting this last year, she told me, 
to really, if you could do a blend of soils together, a little bit of compost, a little bit of potting soil, some aged pine bark fines, because with us here in the Piedmont of North Carolina, we have really wet winters, right? And the danger for our Semper Vivums is not the cold at all, it is to be too waterlogged. So you need to make sure that you have well draining soil. So mix all of those together, right? All those different kinds of soils together and then plant your your succulents. So that is what I did. It was glorious last year. Loved it. Now they are very drought tolerant. They are succulents after all. However, they do need water. This is a container. It gets, I mean, fries right here. So I did have to shoot it with some water, which is not that big of a deal. I mean, the hose is right there. I would stand on the porch and just kind of shoot over and sprinkle it a little bit and it did great. This winter I did, um, Jerry helped me and we picked it up and literally just put it on the porch so that it did not get inundated with rain. Did great. I never watered it. They did wonderful. I was talking to Miss Kathy this week and she, um, hers was huge. They, she and her husband could not lift it up out of the, um, you know, could not pick it up. So she was like, oh, well, you're on your own kid and left it outside all winter. And she said, they've never done better. So there you go. Gardening is trial and error. Now on the back side of me, I do have um, my little black plastic truck. So I'm just putting my debris in that. In the center last year, this is where I had um, a lot of the tender succulents. They were not cold hardy and I knew that, but they gave me height and they were really pretty. I'm gonna switch out and go ahead and use the different chick charms in here. Now you can see on some of my holes, they're really nice and full and they're doing great. But then over here, evidently my hen <laughs> passed away and so it is gone. So I want to refresh that. I'm just getting in there y'all and I don't have a huge ton of experience. So I can't tell you, you gotta do it exactly this way. I have learned that gardening really just does the best when you can just get in there and just do it. I've got my hori hori, but I need to get this out so I can actually raise it up and so I can replace um, those little chickies and where that hen was. Now, succulents are extremely tough. So we're just kind of, I'm pushing from the inside and pulling with the hori hori and I'm going to make a mess. You know, it's not gardening until you get dirty. So I'm just going to push it out. There we go. So I have this nice little hole section right here and you can see where like that was where the hen was and she passed away. And so we're going to actually pull these apart and I may actually just even go ahead and pull these apart and put them in my bird bath and then put something new here. I think that's what I'm going to do. That was a game time decision right there y'all. Um, but I am going to go ahead and knock off any extra soil in here because the bird bath doesn't have a whole lot of room as far as like that. I can't put this whole big wad in there. So anyway, you see beautiful, healthy roots right there. Happy, happy, happy girls. And so I have my little container right here. So this is where um, those are going to go for the bird bath. So all around the edges, everybody else is looking great. Everybody else is doing good. I don't have any holes in there. So I'm just going to backfill just a little bit because that those chicks had started to sink down a little bit and now I get to have fun and decide which one I am going to do. Now I have two that look very much they're the green with the red tips on this end. So let's go and then I have something with some burgundy. So let's go completely different and let's go with this sweet one which is that's the great thing because everybody comes with tags. This is Gold Rush and Gold Rush is a beautiful um, kind of that red maroon with those yellow tips on it. Um, just a, a really fun different kind of color and you can see I've got some babies coming off. So we're going to plop that one in there and then I think I will go ahead and do um, this is where the creativity comes in. This is the fun part. Let's see. Oh, 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 let's do. Oh, this one's fun. This is, I like this one. This is Sugar Shimmer. <laughs> I 
Don't you love that name? So we have Sugar Shimmer right here, which does have a lovely green. There are some little bit of a red tips to it, but it does have a shimmer look to it. Now, I would like to go ahead and take some of these babies off so that I can use them in my bird bath. And so this is a great way to um, kind of get the most bang for your buck because if you have really happy sempervivums, then they're going to produ produce chicks like crazy. So here we do. We've got, right, so this is, would be like the hen, and then these are the, all the little chicks all around it. Well, this is a nice size chick right here. So I have my nice snips. I'm gonna find right here where I have, where it connects. Hopefully everybody's being cooperative here. And I can take my snips, come in. Give me one second here. It's real live gardening, y'all. And I snap it. Okay, so what I just did is I snipped off the little chick, right? And then that was my stem. What you're gonna do is let these sit and cure in the shade outside for a couple of days. We want this to harden off. And so what's gonna happen is these little hairs on the stem are actually gonna start to produce some roots. So if you want to take your chicks off, snip them off. If you can get as much stem as you can, that would be great. But I've also gotten them where they were just at the base because that's how you could get them off. We're gonna put them in my little container and I'm gonna set them up on the porch in the shade for a couple of days. They'll harden off cure on the end and then you can just plug them in to wherever you need to they'll grow and then that becomes the hen and later on they produce chicks so that's a great way to you know like i said most bang for your buck that's the beautiful thing about sempervivums and also you can share them because after a couple of years these things are going to take off and you're going to have tons and you will be able to share them with your friends. So what I'm gonna do is have fun selecting which ones are gonna go here on the sides and up on the top. So at this point, I'm gonna plant it just like I would an annual, take it off. Now, there's not massive roots. This is not root bound, right? So you don't wanna go in there and start breaking everything up. Just go ahead and get it planted and they will be fine. So this is where the fun starts for me. So we're just gonna get these sweet things in the pot and um, figure out where everybody's gonna go. So the Michael Carr planter got completely done. It is great. Just smush those babies right in there, in there together and then gave them a good drink of water. And that is all we have to do for that. Um, it'll be fun to watch that one grow and develop. Of course, I'll keep you updated. Now, here we are at the bird bath. This is the Florentine bird bath from Unique Stone. I had gotten it a couple of years ago and for whatever reason, this one um, had a small crack in it. So it wasn't working really well as a bird bath because it was leaking water and it wouldn't hold the water. Well, of course, you know, you just pivot, right? You go do something different. So I turned it into this beautiful 
succulent container right here in the middle. I mean, it's just all right here together. It gives me some height here um, and it is beautiful. All of these Sempervivums were chicks that I took off of my plants from last year and they are growing and developing and doing really well. My mom gave me two different kinds of agaves to put in the middle last year and we were very unsure of their hardiness. We did not know um, if they would survive the winter or not. One looks like it is surviving and the other one did not. So I'm using my Hori Hori to come in here um, because it has that serrated edge and I can come in and literally kind of just like cut out um, where this agave is. We're going to create a hole so that I can put the giant in here. Sometimes a little easier said than done. I'm trying to figure out where those roots go because I don't want to disturb everybody else. Here we go. All right. Out. So then, it's the great thing about the hori hori is you can use it to cut, chop, slice, dice, dig out, and I'm gonna take out my hole because the Giant has a really decent size um, container and it has all that good potting soil in there. So I need to make some room for her to go. Now, if you're looking at doing this with a bird bath that you have, I do have rocks in the bottom. This is not a fast draining. It's not like as soon as you put it in, it just whoosh, immediately goes out. Um, so it does retain water for a little bit of time. Remember I told you that the Sempervivums do not like to be wet and soggy. That's why I put some little pea-sized gravel in the bottom. Then I did the same thing, did a mixture. There we go. So, and I have found with the Sempervivums, if you can get in the center and kind of push, it tends not to break anything off and it's much more forgiving. Now, if you have any holes where your roots are, make sure you go in there and backfill with some soil. That way, because you don't want your roots exposed to air. You need your roots covered up. So, that's fun. Why not? Let's do that. And then, remember this guy that I took out that was not doing so well? So, we're just going to kind of gently break apart some roots right here. Put this off to the edge find some holes like I have a nice little hole right here and we're going to cut out a little space and get them planted so that's what I'm going to do so I'm going to break these apart and get them tucked in and um, then we'll give her a nice little drink of water here we go um what jerry and i did is jerry raked back the mulch for me because we do have an irrigation line in here we have electrical but thank goodness the lighting goes straight back and he exposed the irrigation line for me so that we're not having to do an irrigation repair so we pulled back the mulch the mulch was not super thick here just because it's that time of year where we need to replace it so it was a little thin not that big of a deal and then we pour down one of the bags of the black gold um, planting mix. So what I'm going to do is I have my power planter auger drill. This is the five inch heavy duty tip. With our clay soil, I need the heavy duty tip. And I'm going to come through here and there are 12 plants. This five inch is perfect for grande size containers, um, like a quart size container. It is wonderful. And I'm going to go ahead and just kind of put in my 12 holes for my Nemesia. Then I can come back and plant them. 
If you're interested in these power planner, the drills, the augers, what I use, I will have the link up for you and you can go to power planter. We have, um, we adore working with power planner. Greg and his whole team and family is just wonderful to work with and they make the best products here in the United States. They partner with the DeWalt to have their drills. So we just use all of their products. And like I said, have had nothing but marvelous results with them. We've partnered with them. And so we have a whole page on their website that has exactly what I use. And it says Jenny's Picks. And then I go through and tell you about how do I use the five inch? How do I use the seven inch? How do I use the nine inch? So you can get exactly what you need for your garden. So I will have that link in the video description. So check that out. And yeah, so it's really easy. This drill has a protection in it. So when I hit something resistance, it will stop. So it is very good for heavy, thick clay soil or rocky soil, or if you have roots, it protects you and it does not uh, cause you harm. So even a little five foot two myself can handle this drill and a three gallon auger bit on it like a boss. And um, I can do amazing things with this product. So that's what I'm gonna do drill my 12 holes and it's kind of be kind of not in perfect lines. It's going to be a little bit random because the Nemesia is nice and open and airy and I want a carpet, not little soldiers lined up in a row. So I'm going to avoid the irrigation and get them to dug. All 12 of the sweet uh, Nemesias are in the ground. Love this Sunsatia coconut. I think it's going to do really well here. Again, the, we're testing this. This is why Proven Winners sends these to us so that we can really test them and see how they do. This is considered a full sun spot and um, hopefully the camera's not showing it, but Jenny is glistening really well right now. Um, it is quite warm and <laughs> these sweet things are going to, they're going to take it and they're going to take the heat. So I will let you know how they do throughout the growing season. By using the ultra outdoor um, planting mix, it really does a great job of amending the soil. We do have really thick red clay soil and by putting it down first and then use, using my auger, it mixes in the, you know, the soil amendment with my native soil. So it all comes together and does really nicely. Then you saw Jerry come through and do a little bit of the top dress with it. This space right here is an annual bedding space. So that is what we use and that's why we're amending it so well. Now, of course, you can use that ultra outdoor planting mix in anything where you're planting a shrub or you're a perennial. It's a great way just to amend the soil because the happier and healthier your soil is, the happier and healthier your plants are. Um, they're just kind of randomly placed through here. The irrigation line, of course, is snaking through there. We've not had irrigation on since sometime last summer. Winters, early springs are notoriously wet here in North Carolina, and we haven't had any rain in for a week, but this soil was really damp. I am not going to water them in because also it's damp, and then we're expecting two days of like heavy rain. So they're going to be just fine. I do not need to water them in. Um, remember, when you have plants in the landscape, you really have to water less often than when you have them in a container because they have more soil available to them and can soak up all that good um, moisture. So putting the coconut nemesia here, it pairs really well with my um, candy tuft in the back, the campfire marshmallow bidens that are right here in the urns. It all blends together quite nicely. The alyssum that's behind me, the snow princess, tying in all of those colors and plants. And then in the patio here really soon, probably in the next week or so, I'm going to add the Supertunia mini vista white to my flower beds. So all of that white will come together and really pop. So that is fun, have them in the ground. And then of course, my chick charms in the containers and in the bird bath, everybody is very happy. So we've got a full day ahead of us. So I think I'm going to go have a water break. I think I might put the first pair of shorts for 2023 on, cause y'all, it is toasty out here. Um, 
But as always, we hope you have enjoyed it, learned something new, found something that you can apply to your garden. And as always, thanks so much for gardening with Creekside. Y'all have a fantastic day and we'll see you in the next video. Bye friends.